<laughs> well, hello everybody and welcome to yet another sparkling edition of the In World Review. It is September already. We were nearly there last week, but not quite. But now we are thoroughly into September. I guess that means in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, you can safely say autumn is sort of on its way, isn't it? It's, um, what is it? This is, in fact, the 7th of September, and it is the year 2014, as they uh, say. Also, <laughs> used the Western World calendar there. Um, this is the Inworld Review. We're broadcasting live from uh, Chilbo in Second Life, and we're brought to you in association with AVU TV. And uh, what we feature on this program basically is um, uh, a kind of roundup of the latest news to do with the metaverse and um, also a little bit about Second Life in particular. And um, sort of a bit of open discussion on these matters. Um, just a few little technical notes so you know what's going on um, uh, this week. Um, uh, those of you watching last week know that um, we are now without our wonderful camera person, Pet Love Pet Shop, for um, about three months anyway. And uh, <clears throat> we don't actually have the, a regular camera person to fit in. So what's happening today is that I personally, while I'm blabbering my head off here, I'm also recording this offline just in case anything goes wrong assuming nothing goes wrong with the offline recording as well, of course. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Tara is actually streaming this to live stream um, because she has sort of the, the better kit for the job, I think. And uh, from what I can see on my monitor, everything is absolutely fine. So <clears throat> we, have, we have two things going here. Um, we're one team member less. Now, we haven't got any actual guests um, apart from uh, Tara and myself and Maria t uh, this week. Uh, simply because we weren't entirely sure whether it would all work out. And while we're doing this experiment, I thought maybe not confuse ourselves too much with um, trying to bring in guests and sorting their sound problems and everything else um, out. So, uh, welcome to the show. That's just a bit of background on, on the, what's going on here. I am, of course, joined by um, uh, Tara, um, who's on my left. Uh, hello, Tara. And uh, greetings. Uh, if we're here, I'm here, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> you <hope>. Multitasking. <laughs> it, it, it certainly figures like you are. And over on my right, of course, uh, we got Maria Korolov. So uh, welcome, Maria. Well, uh, hi, Mal. Thank you for having me here today. Great. And. Um, on with the news, I guess. I'm just going to go through my highlights before we hand over to Tara. We can get Tara's highlights out of the way so she can concentrate on the filming. And um, then we'll move into a discussion uh, with uh, Maria's links and everything else. Um, <clears throat> I do actually... Um, Oh, now this is, um, you'll have to, uh, we don't have a system this week for copying over links into the chat, which is unfortunate. Um, so I'm going to just read out. So the first link I've got is to blogs.discoverymagazine.com. And uh, they had uh, an article in the week um, about skin color still matters in video games. And um, it's quite interesting. There's been some subsequent discussion on this theme um, about the number of um, white people, shall we say, Caucasian-skinned um, avatars, um, compared with, um, uh, um, well, just black-skinned and uh, coffee-coloured, as I prefer. I wish the whole world was coffee-coloured, <laughs> to quote the old song. Um, we will uh, be. We will be. Yeah, we will be eventually. We just go at it until we <laughs> got rid of the <laughs> everything else. Yeah. Um, but it is an interesting um, thing because the, the theory seems to be that, for example, um, um, Afro-Caribbean avatars, for example, uh, there are plenty of them, but there are probably many uh, real-world Afro-Caribbean people who actually, for reasons of their own uh, role-playing or just um, easier to get on, choose um, a, a sort of Caucasian avatar. <laughs> Pardon me. This is the, this is the so, sorry, Mal. Uh, this is the discovery article, correct? Yeah, blogs at uh, discovery. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have some additional comments on. Okay, fine. On that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so that you'll find there. Um, Gigaom, which is at gigaom dot com. G i g a um, o m. Oh, uh, 
Now that's interesting. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, yes. Om and then dot com. Um, they have an article um, on the hardware side about Jaunt, um, uh, which is um, well, the CEO of Jaunt basically, uh, which is one of the hardware developers um, uh, doing stuff. Um, has an article saying cinema will adapt easily to Samsung's virtual reality headset. And um, it's it's one of these articles where they're figuring, well, you know, if, uh, beyond games and virtual worlds and stuff, why the um, they what they consider one of the major pickups of VR technology will be <laughs> headsets or whatever um, will be um, films and um, entertainment filmed in 360, not not so much interactive, um, but just um, things that you can spin around your viewpoint in. And um, as I think I mentioned last week when Maria wasn't here, um, I've, I've been sort of looking at various things, including the uh, virtual con thing in Utherverse I attended, where um, the, the patterns of thought tended to agree with Maria that, um, you know, the um, it will be things like booths, out of home experiences that are going to be. Uh, the key factor in getting public traction for this sort of stuff, o over and beyond the gamers who oh. just can't live without an Oculus <laughs> contraption. Well, well the, the the thing with the jaunt and the and the Samsung one mm. is that it take it's a cheap case for your cell phone. Now, mm. what ja jaunt VR is a company that makes filmmaking equipment for virtual reality, mm. so it's definitely in their interests that a lot of people get these cases for their smartphones and watch movies in 3D. The movies in 3D are just about the only thing you can watch on your cell phone because right now cell phones aren't high powered enough mm. to give you real interactive 3D. Mm. But they're good enough to show movies. I mean, people watch movies on, on these cell phones all the time. Uh, in fact, I was just watching a funny cat video the other day. No, <laughs> the dog video, the spider dog. Oh, have you guys seen the spider? Anyway. Mm. I, I've, so, I've, so, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, so, I've um, I mean, of course, this week we've actually seen the the final demonstrations of the um, of the Samsung thing, which uh, the right, name right, I forget yeah. offhand, and um, Samsung <coughs> Gear VR. Yeah, yeah, and you know, my immediate thought was, I can't get into Second Life on my iPod <laughs> <laughs> or Open Sim for that matter. Right. But obviously, if it's something but I can you get can in. watch. Mm. But you can watch 3D movies on it, and mm. uh, and you can watch regular 2D movies on a giant screen in front of your face, mm -hmm. which is also nice. Instead of watching it on a tiny little screen a foot in front of you, you can watch it on a giant screen as if you're sitting in the movie theater. Um, the but but you need a really high res cell phone screen for that. Um, so it's it's it'll be an inducement for you to upgrade your cell phone because you can watch it for that, uh, and you're not going to be moving around much because when you watch a movie you're pretty much sitting in one spot, so it's the least likely to cause nausea, um, and it, everybody has a cell phone, so if if a case costs between twenty and a hundred bucks, that's something anybody can afford. Mm. And so it's good for flights. It's good for just, you know, sitting in bed or on your couch and by yourself, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it, it, it will also help people acclimatize to real interactive 3D because while the full headsets are too expensive and are only found in virtual video arcades, like you were saying, uh, meanwhile, people can get these movies and and 3D stuff on their cell phones and kind of get practice VR. So mm. they kind of slowly start to transition and get their bodies used to it. Because I'm sure most many of us, when we first rode in a car, we were a little queasy as well. Except that these days people are putting babies into car seats. Uh, from I mean, my kids love falling asleep uh, in the car. And I guess they're most more adaptable when they're babies. And now we all grow up. And very few of us get car sick anymore, um, but I'm sure in the old in the old days people, people thought that if a car went too fast, we'd all die from lack of oxygen. So, mm. <laughs> not that it's relevant at all to VR. 
<laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're, 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 these these days we probably think of the invention of the car, and most people concur. I mean, even though they love their cars, they would actually concur that they'd probably have been in, it made illegal if we knew what was going to happen, <laughs> and or, or restricted. And you know, I kind of wonder if this is the case with some technology we're getting now. Sort of twenty years down the line, somebody will see all the chaos and suddenly think oh <laughs> what do we create here <laughs> but anyway now uh wired um co uk another blog or i guess it's in the international edition uh too has an article by bendon avibe a- or how you pronounce it is the ceo of oculus rift uh, the big question how will gaming change in the next 10 years and um it, the um basically um Talking about uh, virtual reality and presence, inverted commas, will continue to transform both gaming and other entertainments. And um, obviously goes on a bit about VR there. Right, now, all I have open now is the uh, my actual Twitter feed with some headlines in it. So let me just have a quick scan down here. Um, <clears throat> oh, yes, there's uh, something I need to open there. Um Oh, National Fall Agenda at the University of Delaware. That's in World 2, I think. Sorry about this. I don't um, have all the tabs required open at the moment. Um, (laughs) Right. Um, Destination Rainbow Country. I believe this is an open sim destination, so it won't be on the Second Life Agenda. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yes, um, Virtual Outworlding, which is uh, Thinker and Melville's blog, uh, had a post on Thursday, um, 200 and, uh, t- sorry, 2014 Education, MA Education in Virtual Worlds, UWE, University of the West of England. Nice to see American people talking about British colleges. Um, anyway, this um, if you um, look up Tinkerer's blog, which, um, as I say, is virtualoutworlding.com, um, I find a little bit more information about that. Um, basically, all the sta- um, it's, um, it's advertising courses, etc., for uh, the coming year, but the, the, all the courses actually take place in the environment um, of Second Life. So... Um, kind of be an interesting one there and wait for the right tab to come up national here we are national fall agenda at the university of delaware right um uh second life inquiry i have a post too uh which has an agenda for um um the university of delaware which i believe is in the usa and um, a speaker series begins on September the 10th. If you want to find out more about this one, go to slenquirer.com. And um, always um, a selection of good posts there. Some of them are quite serious, some of them more sort of lifestyle So you can pick and choose. Or better still, you can read them both if you're really into that. Um, right, okay. Well, I think... Um, I think I've covered enough there to um, actually just, um, oh, oh, hang on, there was one. Hyper Gazette, that was it. Destination Rainbow, uh, Rainbow Country. This is a build uh, developed by um, um, Soru Nishi, who does a lot of stuff in Second Life. And this is a, in a region on a grid called PM Grid. Um, if you want more information, just go to the hypergazette.blog. Uh, oh, hang on, uh, blogspot.com, and uh, you'll find out a little bit more about that. It looks like um, a useful, um, uh, very, very colourful <laughs> destination for the pictures here. Um, I'm not sure, I can't see a direct link, a uh, hypergrid link for the PM grid, but um, I'm no doubt it's easily findable. <laughs> okay, well, with that, um, I'm going to throw over to um, Tara, who's, as I said earlier, is not only on camera this week, but she's sitting on a very spectacular new seat and has various things to tell. So over to you, Tara. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. <laughs> I, ho- I hope that uh, my audio holds up uh, because we're obviously testing a lot of different things. Uh, <laughs> and I'm noticing a few glitches uh, as we go along, including some some uh, dropouts. <laughs> uh, maybe in your recording, Mel, but probably are not in mine, including your intro just now. Anyhow, um, greetings in the Pacific Northwest, where summer continues, uh, amazingly enough. And 
uh, you'll 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 notice that I'm sitting on a different sort of seat today, and I have a, and I'm holding on to a different sort of kitty, uh, and both of these are items from this round that just started this week of the uh, Gotcha Arcade. Um, this is a fat cat, um, and there are several. They come in several different colors. Um, and uh, one style that you hold in your arm that's kind of just laying <laughs> laying across your arms, and one like this, this one that I that I'm holding here. Um, <laughs> they're very cute. And the the chair is one of a number of monster chairs from D Lab, um, and this is one of them. And uh, and I have another one, and I probably will go back and get a couple more just because they're great fun. Um, we have another one over here on the side stage. Um, this this little guy with his tongue sticking out. Uh, he has different animations, which is kind of cool too about these. Um, you know, I, the Gotcha Arcade is, uh, I think, one of the certainly one of the highlights of the of the world of gotchas uh, for for people really, I think, kind of going all out, or at least a fair number of the people who. Wonderful things. Oh, I think some of his voice is dropping off. Or is it just me? Yeah, she's... So she's Buying them from someone... Ah, oh, here we go. Um, did again. you lose my audio? Uh, we did. It faded oh, out yep. about 30 seconds ago, but it seems to be back. Mm. Okay, well, you may not be hearing me on Skype, but I'm, I'm optimistic that it recorded. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Um, Yes, we have um, this year, it, you know, cute critters have been very much part of this. And uh, in this year's, we have aardvarks. <laughs> and you have to love these guys. Um, this is one that's unpacked. This is a cutie girl aardvark. And the other one I got, the, you're seeing the box that the aardvark comes in, uh, which... <laughs> You know, it's as good as the aardvark itself. So, I mean, you get two for the price of. <laughs> and also, as I recall, the aardvark comes not only with one you can just res like I did this one, but one you can carry. So, um, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you think you'd like some aardvarks to clutter up your uh, virtual life, um, you can get several for, the, for, the, for, a, for a single uh, trial. And they come in different co colors. Now, we have... Sitting on a, this is um, the, the, the box that the two planters are sitting on is one of the items in the collection from the, from the designer who has the breathing puppy that uh, was featured in uh, Hamlet's blog here a couple of weeks ago. And I am going to have to go back and hit that gotcha some more until I get one of those puppies be because I failed on about four tries. <laughs> it is a rare, which means you know your luck is good or not. But sitting on top of it are are the two of another designer's collection. I think these are. Um, uh, well, I can't look it up because I <laughs> I have no <laughs> no on screen stuff. Uh, but anyway, we have a there's a, there's a, a large collection in one in one gotcha of kitty planters different colors and different styles. And these are just two of the ones uh, <clears throat> from, from, uh, from that collection. And this is obviously not all that's available. And uh, you'll have to excuse my, definitely not quite what you're up to, what you're accustomed to camera work because I don't have the HUD yet uh, <clears throat> to be able to accomplish what Pet Love um, does with camera. So. Well, I'm, I'm oh, looking at a sort okay, of close onward. up here, and they are absolutely lovely, aren't they? I love the eyelids on the, the, <laughs> the one on the right. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I should note about the, the fat cats. The fat cat uh, has a HUD that you can change the eye color. You'll notice that this guy has eyes of two different colors. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't even tried out the HUD, but uh, I notice he blinks, which is pretty cute, too. Oh. Anyway... Um, there's a, there's a little item that Mal uh, failed to mention in his intro, and that is uh, tomorrow is a <clears throat> rather noteworthy day uh, in the life of this show. Uh, tomorrow marks the seventh anniversary of Metaverse Week in Review. Although I think wow. it was Second Life Week in Review when we started, because there wasn't a Metaverse in the sense of uh, all the Open Sim stuff at that point. Oh, 
I think it was always oh. quite, no, it was, well, all, was the metaverse. Yeah. I think the metaverse was Second Life back then. Yeah, um, it was. It was, no, it exactly. was all, the it, show was called. The show, no, the show started off as Second Life We Can Review now. Oh, oh okay. Okay, I don't. Um, okay, well, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I, I forgot that, years. so I didn't know that. Anyway, they, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, and I have a screenshot of the uh, our original uh, our original home. Um, yeah, what was the place? <laughs> what was that site we used to begin with? Um, oh, anyway. um, oh, quite a few, but Operator Eleven was the first of the main. Operator things, Eleven, yeah, wasn't it? yeah. Well, it was some. It was called something else before it was called. No, I guess it started off as Operator Eleven, and then it changed names, and then we got fed up and moved. <laughs> as I recall. <laughs> Anyhow, we start, yes, we start eight years, and I think we are uh, the undisputed longest running um, <clears throat> screencast uh, news show in Second Life. Uh, yes, there's, I, there's nothing. nothing. That everybody, and, else and the come, everybody else has come and gone, but the show <laughs> goes on forever. And, that, that's, <laughs> and that's, goes on. Guys. Um, that's quoting the song, isn't it? The art school dance goes on uh, forever. <laughs> now. Mel, can you please write me 500 words or more of reminiscence about this show on its <laughs> anniversary, and I'll post as an article. Yes, why not? Prompt me, prompt me, but <laughs> indeed, <laughs> let's start again. That should, that should be fairly easy to do. <clears throat> I did yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I did actually plan to put something up on uh, Metal World Broadcasting's unused blog <laughs> at some point. Okay. I've got blogs all over the place, basically, and they're, they're all full yeah, of yeah, notes no and problem. nothing else. I have no problem running a reprint, just uh, copy and paste and <laughs> get it to me, and I'm perfectly happy. <clears throat> Oh, I'll give it to you, and then um, I'll be put it somewhere else later for the archive. Yes, um, I'll be yeah. most, okay. happy, most happy yeah. to do that. Okay, yes, Tari, I haven't <laughs> finished yet. <laughs> yes, I haven't finished yet. Okay, well, the other, the other items I have, I want to just a couple more comments on that Discovery Magazine uh, article, and, and specifically the study uh, that was the source of the, that the, the article was about. There were a couple interesting, a, a couple interesting things to me and how that study was set up. Um, first off, it was actually set up as a pretty good double blind, um, <clears throat> which is, of course, the gold standard when it comes to <clears throat> serious research, where you have two test groups or more, and they don't know, <clears throat> and they're not aware of what the other test group is seeing, and so you can compare the results. And what they did was they had... Um, uh, da, 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 da. 56 study participants, uh, half were um, identifying as white and, and half identifying as, as uh, black. And she set them up with a video um, that um, a fabricated magazine story. Sorry, Todd. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, the... An avatar uh, profiled were either all white uh, or an equal mix of white, black, and his, uh, Hispanic and Asian. Um, and then she had them perform two tasks. Uh, she had them create and customize their own avatars and then rate their willingness to reveal their real racial identity uh, through, the, through the appearance of their avatar. Um, and the, the, uh, the telltale on this is that when those of uh, the blacks in the study were shown the magazine who saw the magazine article that was racially diverse, they were much more likely to create a black avatar and to be comfortable revealing their, um, their actual real life uh, ethnicity. C uh, conversely, if they were shown the, the, the article that was mostly white, they tended towards creating a white avatar and being uncomfortable revealing their race. Um, com by comparison, it didn't matter which, uh, which article the white participants in the study saw. They still created themselves as white. They didn't, you know, they didn't. So, so uh, I found that quite fascinating. Um, you know, it, it, it says, a great deal to me about the degree to which those who are minorities, um, and I put minorities in quotes because uh, rapidly the uh, Spanish, the, the non-white 
population of the U.S. is has or is very close to crossing the line where the white white people will actually be the minority. Mm. Um, but anyway, the degree to which blacks are sensitive about their their race as it appears, even in virtual worlds, and for good reasons, from you know from other things things we've we've uh, we've seen and heard in studies where it was you know and and anecdotal uh, cases where someone has a white person has adopted a black avatar and then noted how differently they were treated in world you know um, it's um it's i'll uh, just quick in an anecdote here because i was reading an article about this um in, in the week um uh, which is um, distressing, really. And that is that, um, uh, that it was pointing out the notion that um, normally when you elect an American president, um, the, the whole country kind of rallies, rallies around them as president and it, they're treated in a fairly nonpartisan way. And that the election of Obama, very sadly, seems to have destroyed this. And there's a, you know, a lot of sort of um, hate stuff directed um, as Obama, uh, for one reason or another, and I think race maybe comes into it, um, that is the antithesis of that um, old American way of, um, you know, universally standing behind the president, uh, which I thought was is disturbing. But it makes you wonder, it's, you know, why, why people might, you know, what is even even though they are now the majority or coming to be the majority, why people want to deny their origin or whatever virtually. So. I'm sorry about that, but I well, thought that I wanted yeah. to comment on that. Yeah, well, when I'm, I, when I'm, I say I'm the hoping. majority, that, that includes, um, a, you know, a mix of, of both race and ethnicity. So that's combining uh, blacks, um, Asians, and yeah. uh, those who identify with Hispanic origin. So, Maria, did you have a comment there? Yeah, I was going to say that what I'm hoping is that... Uh, you have a, a similar situation as w as with uh, the gays and lesbians that the more people you know who are gay and lesbian, the more tolerant you are towards them. Um, mm. And but also, if you didn't know any before, and all of a sudden gays and lesbians are popping up, you might get really really mad. Mm. I think that the same thing is happening with with Obama. Is that if you didn't have a position, blacks in position of power before, and now you have them and you're getting used to it, your tolerance as a society will increase, while at the same time, people who weren't used to seeing blacks in a position of power and are upset by it, see it for the first time and get really mad, and they'll, they'll get over it. And, uh, and you know, as, as the rest of society moves along, it will drag them with them until until they they either will keep it to themselves uh, because it's not polite anymore or they'll forget they even felt that way because now like looking back at the 60s nobody says that they were opposed to you know cross multiracial marriages for example right these yeah. days but a lot of people used to be i mean it took loving to uh took a supreme court decision to allow that and apparently i, I assume a lot of people in the united states thought that multiracial marriages were immoral and against the Bible. And now nobody is going to say, oh, yeah, I was like that back then, even though, you know, half the people were. So, um, yeah. so what I'm hoping is that in retrospect, after Obama has served his term and we, and, and we move, moved on and we have more black presidents, more minority presidents, that people will look back and go, mm. Oh yeah, that's a problem with. Uh, I never thought that way, and and uh, or, or if uh, you know, or they'll die, <laughs> which is <laughs> also likely because it's mostly older, um, <laughs> older people who have a problem. So I just, so, I just so don't hope we don't get a return to sexism if Hillary gets in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we, we will. Oh no. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I think we. <laughs> I, I think that we will, because when we have a first woman, I think we will have a problem with it. I think we might have a little bit less of a problem because we've seen Margaret Thatcher. We we know oh. that the uh, the the head of Germany 
is is a woman right now. Are they and women? These are... <laughs> yeah. there's, some deba- uh, there's some debate in the UK as to whether Margaret Thatcher was ever a woman. <laughs> but no, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. No, I better shut up. Okay. Yeah, that's a, but, but my point is, Let's... these are countries that we see as our peers, as opposed hmm. to black presidents, typically are presidents of African countries, and we don't see them as equal to the United States. Whereas the UK and Germany... Uh, uh, other countries that have had women leaders, I guess it's, uh, or was it Finland, I think, had a woman leader who was a dead ringer for one of our late night talk show hosts. Um, so uh, these, these are countries that would kind of, especially the, the, those of us with w- white Northern European backgrounds, these are countries that, you know, we've, we've seen female leaders in and, and kind of, you know, that worked out, you know. Uh, UK, the UK lived through having Margaret Thatcher as a leader; uh, it survived it. So I, I, I think maybe we may have been inoculated by that a little bit, and also by oh. the fact that Hillary Clinton uh, was an active first lady. I think she was the first really active one to take on more than just a charity project, or you know, l- like uh, um, pretty much every other first lady has done, but has actually tried to make policy changes. And she got so much flack for it from the Republicans. Having gone through that already, maybe they're just tired out. <laughs> yeah. And, and yes. maybe well, they'll anyway, just let that's, it go that's the real that's <laughs> that's the real world. We can we can leave that aside, which since it's not the focus of the show, we tend to avoid politics <laughs> just because <laughs> there's no way to agree. Because yeah. we'll never get out of it. Yes. It, yes. It's like anyway, onwards. Onwards and upwards, start right there. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, onward. Um, okay, well, the, uh, the other notable item I wanted to comment, just kind of comment up on is the on- ongoing um, very loud kerfluffle um, around the gamer world uh, in what is now being called Gamergate. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, which, is, which is this issue of uh, some people in the, in the world of gamers claiming that there's been uh, uh, corruption in the gaming press. Serious harassment. It's been very visible um, in calling gaming the gaming world down on their on their rampant sexism. Um, and but what particularly and one article is that. Uh, I, I, I happen to have time to read this morning, uh, linked from uh, Hamlet's blog, uh, an article by L. Rhodes, uh, published in Medium.com. Um, he apparently the, this this whole thing has unfolded largely on um, uh, on Twitter, as far as the discussion is concerned. And yeah, I got to pay attention to the camera here too, boy. <laughs> I don't multitask. <laughs> uh, anyway, he he uh, apparently. Conducted something of a of a discussion with some questions to participants to uh, to find out you know what they uh, you know what their issues were where they agreed and where they had different opinions um, and he said he commented that when it when it, the results kind of fell out three bar- people seemed to agree on three broad points uh, that <clears throat> they see the world the word gamer as a valuable way to identify themselves. Uh, that they are dismayed with what they see as corruption in, in the gaming press and that they are opposed to exclusion and therefore to harassment. Um, the, but, the, but the point that I think is perhaps you know, germane for us was it an interesting distinction that, that uh, Rhodes made in his article, and that is between uh, what you might call the gamer press, in other words, the, the fan press, which certainly covers this show, um, and the main, mainstream press, um, and uh, the issue that is clearly unresolved and and not an easy one to to resolve among gamers of you know what standards do you apply to um, the the fan the fan created news coverage. Um, and and the issue you know one of the one of the issues that that I think certainly is a real issue, and that is, you know, are people getting paid by um, the developers, by the game developer co- companies to, you know, to 
promote, uh, essentially, um, versus actual doing actual news coverage. And it's the actual news coverage that has caused the whole thing to kind of, you know, go, uh, go bananas. Um, anyway, it's, uh, I, it's, it's interesting, you know, we, we have, you know, consistently maintained a, a posture of, you know, Second Life is not a game, it's an environment, it's a, it's a platform. Um, but there's lots of folks, if you take the big wide world, who, you know, who don't seem to have the same issue that, that we have had with apply, calling Second Life a game. Um, so, you know, and, and I, I don't know that I, I don't think I've ever run into anybody in Second Life or in, in, uh, in Open Sim who calls themselves, the, that views themselves as a gamer because of their participation in Second Life. Yeah. Uh, open sim, yeah, but not even, um, pe not, not even people who use uh, open sim and Second Life for role playing. I don't think this would describe themselves as quote gamers. Yeah, well, that's that's been my experience, but but still, I think that whole press thing is an interest is an interesting distinction um, to to be made and to be thought about. Um, so when I'm not trying to do six things at once. <laughs> <laughs> I might come up with some further observations on that. Um, anyway, my last little item for today is uh, not only do we have our seventh, did we have our seventh anniversary, but uh, September third was the Firestorm viewers' fourth anniversary, um, and they had a bit of a celebration. And of note, because of my uh, my affection for kitty cats, is yes. there is a new Firestorm kitty cat to be had. It's it's a freebie and it's a perma pet just like last year's, and uh, you'll see one on the show next week. Um, if you didn't go to the party and you would like to have a kitty cat that you do not have to feed, <laughs> that you do not have to worry about it having babies, <laughs> or any of that stuff. <laughs> you, you just, Does you it just move want around? A cute critter that, oh, yes, they're, they're, they're just like regular kitty cats. They, you know, they, they'll wander around depending upon what you tell them. They will, you can play with them. Um, they have all kinds of fun animations, Aww. you know, that they go through randomly. They're just total cute. Um, uh, just make a trip to uh, uh, the kitty cat. Oh, I they have one for it. Pair, you have to log in. Do you know them if all. they have any? Do you know if they have any for Open Sim? That's uh, no, they've never. They. Have, they uh, at least to this point, Kitty Cats has not branched out into Open Sim at all. I um, actually hope uh, to get. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe down the road. I'm hoping to get uh, Candy Klein, who's the creator of them, um, on the show at some point. Um, but I did actually ask her that question not so long ago. Um, there, uh, the reason I want her on the show is actually because they, um, the breeding and the whole business of the kitty cats, um, you know, involves an extensive offline database. So it connects to the, the web. And I would have think, I thought it was a kind of natural thing that they could um, port an outlet into. Uh, the hybrid grid or something if they wanted. Um, I, if I remember rightly, she she didn't really see a big enough market there. But um, I was just quite fascinated about how the operation runs almost independently of Second Life, except for the cats themselves, which of course res in Second Life. So um, curious, curious. And do all their and do all their fun stuff in Second Life too. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yes. And also, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and having now uh, fiddled with two other breedables. Um, uh, kitty cats just, you know, there's aside from, you know, how any cute factor, um, there's, there's a number of things that, uh, I, I find with, with kitty cats as a breedable that are, that I think they've just, they've done an exceptional job, uh, of the scripting and how they behave and, you know, the options and, and all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I've been <clears throat> recently, uh, I have I have a few uh, dodo birds which you've seen on the show, and the dodos are are, are still quite new and are and, and are still it's still I'd say a fairly painful <laughs> introduction and, and and issues that they're still getting uh, a lot of things ironed out with them. So, 
Uh, but anyway, as I say, you you two can have a kitty cat that you don't have to feed, and uh, and, and you don't have to worry about kittens or any of that. You know, they're <laughs> they're a forever pet until you put them in your inventory and don't take them out again. So anyway, um, that's it for me, and uh, I'll hand it back to you. Um, and and uh, unfortunately, it, it appears that there isn't a way for me to kill that echo that we're getting from <clears throat> from Maria in my audio. Um, uh, I'm. I'm but not there I'm we not, have it. I'm not getting it. It's probably coming from Second Life somehow. So, okay, okay. Well, thanks yeah. for that, Tara. Thanks for endeavouring to film yourself while you were talking. It's not the easiest of tasks, I can tell you. Um, okay. It will be much uh, easier once I, once I master that HUD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Install it. it <laughs> indeed, indeed, it will be. Yes, we live and learn. We get on with these things slowly, but surely we get better and better. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to make. <laughs> I love that phrase. Of how you love fiddling with the breed rules. That is an exceptional <laughs> statement there. Um, but anyway, let's let's get on. Let's get on with uh, some other things. Um, I have a few. Too much in. Sure. Yeah. Um, before <laughs> before I hand to Maria, a couple of other um, sort of uh, links of um, notable this week. Uh, the the first one comes from a site www.fw weekly or one word fww e k l y dot com, uh, which is actually the Fort Worth Weekly, and it has an article called uh, Second Life's Stage. Real world performers are making real world money in virtual reality. Well, the timing is right, isn't it? Um, but actually, this is quite interesting. Um, they've uh, focused, uh, he's probably local actually, on a singer song, songwriter you may have seen in Second Life uh, called Matthew Broyles. And, um, you know, they go through the procedure of him sitting, setting up for a gig. Nice real life photograph of him in front of his two workstations and mic. And um, also um, uh, noting when they, that when they covered it, he was um, showing the stage with uh, Beth Odez, who, of course, plays violin. Uh, Crap Mariner's sister, in fact. Um, <clears throat> so quite a nice article there. If you go to fwweekly or oneword.com, you can um, find that article. Uh, good PR for Matthew as well, uh, come to think of it. Uh, the Hyper Gazette, uh, which you'll find at the dash hypergazette.blogspot.com. Um, uh, I mentioned them earlier anyway. They also have a post um, from the 2nd of September about the Metroba Fest. Yes, Metroberfest, as in Oktoberfest, on the Metropolis grid, which, of course, <laughs> as we all know, is a German grid, basically. Uh, it started, um, it, sorry, it won't start, in fact, until uh, September 29th, and it will continue to October the 5th. And um, basically, it's um, a big event, which will hopefully get a lot of people into Metropolis. So you can check our uh, Hyper Gazette blogspot.com uh, for um, more on that one and something else I had two things else I have here oh yes K0 our wonderful stats person who does all the graphs and everything else um, had a couple of uh, uh, no I think it was just one new slide um, slideshow presentation this week uh, virtual reality games by genre and it's the quarter three K0 VR software radar indeed <laughs> He does some lovely different charts. You can find you can find that at uh, K zero. That's uh, K Z E R O dot co dot uk. And finally, um, a post from a strange site. I've never seen this site. There, Hypergrid Business. Mm, yes, indeed. Um, Maria, who I'm going to hand to immediately. Um, and most other things she has up this week is a feature on September events on the Open Sim grids, uh, including the fact that Avination turns four, and um, a lot of people seem to have birthdays and things at the moment. Um, <laughs> be they for life in world. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave that to Maria. Over to you, Maria. Bring us the latest. <laughs> Well, uh, before we get into Open Sim, I wanted to comment on what Tara said about bloggers versus mainstream publications. Um, and uh, there is uh, an FTC law that if you take money for your content, 
you need to disclose that somewhere on your site. So um, this isn't just an ethics issue. This is a legal issue. So, for example, on hypergrid business, we do take money from uh, vendors. We quite happily take money from them. And you can tell immediately which ones we take money from because their ads are in the sidebar. And uh, I want to want to pass along my thanks to those vendors who advertise in hypergrid business because we've been able to bring in a few uh, uh, some uh, help with uh, the platform, including some help on Hyperica with the destinations. And, uh, and of course, it helps pay for the hosting and helps pay for plugins and helps pay for improving everything. Doesn't, unfortunately, help pay for my salary. But, but um, I, I have high hopes that as virtual reality goes really huge, that will change as well. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you're a mainstream blogger or not. Uh, you have to disclose whether you're accepting money for your content. And it, there's nothing wrong with accepting money for your content. And, and in fact, many publications as big as Time Magazine and Newsweek will run entire articles that are paid for by advertisers, and they will have that little advertorial text written in the smallest type possible that is still readable to man. <laughs> and in the faintest shade of gray, so it's, it's really easy to miss. Um, so, so, yeah, this, so this isn't... Uh, the, so this isn't uh, related to how small or how big a publication is. Um, it, it happens uh, at all levels. I think I think that the thing about um, uh, bloggers who are just starting out is that they're still new it. So the stakes about how this works, they're still looking for how to monetize this, how, how to how to make it go, um, and they will mess up and they come and go. Um, but the ones who stick around are the ones who do things right because eventually you get beaten up enough that you figure out how to fix these things. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, uh, and I don't think there's a particular distinction between bloggers and mainstream because uh, it's, it's, all, it's all one continuum based on the size of the publication. You get... There's some very old professionally run publications that have very small circulations, um, like in the financial space or something. There's some very tiny ones that started out with just the newsletter being sent out that grew, grew to magazine size. That are, you know, have high expensive subscriptions to these multi-million subscriber ones like, like Time Magazine and so forth. And there's everything in between. And, and the level of professionalism varies across all dimensions there's some very professional small ones there's some very non-professional big ones i mean look at uh, news of the world which is on every newsstand gets million readers it has zero ethics or standards for any of the articles which apparently are all made up so uh, it, 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 you know it's, it's, you've got gossip mags you've got you've got everything in you know in in all pieces so i, I uh, as somebody who writes both for the really big mainstream publications and, and somebody who has this the small one, hyper good business, um, so I'm very sensitive to this, and so it's a personal kind of thing that no, there there really aren't any clear cut distinctions between any of these. All right, so um, what's up this these past because uh, you know I've been gone these past two weeks, so. Um, uh, as you mentioned, we have the uh, uh, the the uh, the September events listing. Uh, so uh, uh, that's that's probably the biggest thing that uh, people sh need to know about. Um, but there's other stuff that's happened um, these past two weeks as well. So um, let me start out with September events. And then I'll move on to um, some of the other um, stories that we've had. Right. So you already mentioned that Avanation turns four. They are uh, they are the uh, second most popular commercial grid after In Worlds, and I believe they're the third most popular grid overall after In Worlds and um, and OS Grid. Um, and so that they've they have a closed system, even though they have actually invented the export permission for OpenSIM, 
They have not yet put it into actual practice. Um, and uh, they're owned by uh, an OpenSIM core developer, Melanie Thielker, who is based, uh, I believe, in ish either Germany or the UK. Or, I think, or uh, yeah, I think she's in German origin in the UK. <laughs> so a bit both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, a little field grid, which started out as an alternative lifestyle grid, but has evolved into more of a generic social grid, um, is celebrating... Uh, honoring uh, September 11th, they've had their ongoing memorial up on the grid all along. So they'll, they're going to have a memorial of silence and, a, uh, and they'll ring a replica of the New York City fire bell uh, at the time. Um, and they'll and they, they have a museum set up on the site. And in the museum, they will have a live video feed, running video related to the 9/11 attacks. Um, and they're also going to have a place for users to leave leave things that they've created in, mo in memoriam. This is hypergrid enabled, so people can uh, teleport in. Um, and uh, sh also check out the little field calendar. They've got a lot of events. They've got hypergrid safaris going on. They've got uh, all kinds of parties. They've got, uh, I, th I believe they've got building workshops. Um, and they have a huge community of builders. Um, this is one of the prime examples of a community grid. They just got up, moved from Second Life to OpenSim, to OS Grid first. Then after, I guess, enough of them were over here, they set up their own grid. And they brought all their content with them. So the little field grid has so much cool content. Not just adult stuff, but uh, other kinds of content as well. And um, everything is free. Uh, they don't have a currency. It's stuff for the community to share. It might not all be available for hypergrid travelers, although everything can be seen by hypergrid travelers, but you might not be able to take everything home with you, depending on the uh, licenses of the ind individual content and the permissions of the individual content. Um, but it is a great example of, of how uh, OpenSim allows an entire c community to come over bring all their stuff with them and bring all their people with them and reduce their costs like five or tenfold, depending on who they're hosting with. Um, uh, the Relay for Life season began on InWorld on August 23rd. Um, and, they'll be, and they're going to have a fashion show on September 20th. So if you're an InWorld uh, member, this is the biggest commercial grid in OpenSim, um, you can stop by. And they also have a very, very full grid calendar. Every day, there's like a whole bunch of events happening there. Um, uh, I, I love covering business models and your alternate life, um, it decided to change its business model. Now this was, a, it's a tiny little grid. Uh, it, it's only had 21 regions and had very few users on it. And so, so it makes sense that they're going to play around with their business model and, and try doing some different things. Um, it's weird that the business model they picked, um, they decided to go with an all mesh grid with no or little or no building. So they're going to have social activities and games for visitors, uh, no sculptees, almost very few primitives, all mesh. And people will be able to come in and like play on the grid, but not really do anything there. So um, I, I don't know what, how, how that's going to make the money. I'll be interested in seeing that. Um, uh, they say they'll be up and running in about two months. So that was very interesting. Now, um, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but OS Grid uh, is still offline. Now, it's been offline it's now in its fourth week offline, which is which is just insane. This is the longest outage I've ever seen on that grid, and given the fact that it's the oldest open sim grid and one of the largest ones, it's a it's a really real big shame. Um, so uh, uh, Zeta Worlds has uh, Zeta Max, which is a hosting company, has been meeting to launch its own grid, Zeta Worlds, and they finally did that. They did it early. And they're offering anyone who hosts a region on OS Grid with them to move it over to Zeta Worlds or move it over to Metropolis. And uh, Zetamax, of course, is known for offering regions that start at $3 a month. And I have one of the $3 regions. Unfortunately, it's on OS Grid, so I haven't been able to access it for a month. Yes. Maybe I should just 
stop waiting and move over, move I, it over. I haven't, I haven't been able um, to get on my hypergrid safaris because, of course, uh, Slipped. Uh, um, of course, my main hypergrid avatar is OS Grid, so all my inventory and everything is there. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Kitely, um right last week, and um, I could, uh, uh, I, I've got to mention this because you may know what's going on. I couldn't when I tried to hypergrid out of Kitely to the next stop on the tour. They said um, you can't hypergrid out because you're wearing non-exportable items. So I, I right, um, right. to get around this, I got entirely naked, save for a leather jacket, which is <laughs> apparently exportable, and tried again. And it gave me the same message. And the one remaining thing I was wearing that I couldn't be exported with was my eyes. And it, I don't know if you know, <laughs> it's like a live and open sim. If you try to detach your eyes, it doesn't happen. You have to replace them with another oh. pair of eyes. And of course, the open sim right, right. library... And my inventory was devoid of any eyes except the ones I was wearing. So I never managed to hypergrid out of Kitely. I just gave up. And uh, yeah, you should have created new eyes. But uh, <laughs> I was sorry to hear that. And the other the other <laughs> shop was we had. Um, it was actually at um, Shanghai Shanghai Libraries. Uh, Shanghai, uh, how do you pronounce it? Library. Um, yeah. And uh, we we were read to sort of stories, examples of storytelling. Where you know during the hour we were on that stop, and um, really infuriating when you're used to the hypergrid is that you have to either type something in text or move your avatar around within um, I think it's twenty minutes or thirty minutes, or they automatically log you out. Yeah. And that annoyed me as well, so go yes. figure. Anyway, yeah, it's a real shame about OS Grid, but um, hopefully, they, uh, last yeah. I heard, they got a third party who had tested the, um, uh, a the week, content. A week, ago, a week ago, they posted an announcement saying that <clears> they've hired somebody to come in and look at their drives, Yeah, and there hasn't been an update since. So... Um, Real, real shame there because they have so many users, and and I I know it's good, I know it's nonprofit, but still, you know, um, they've had a problem with communication ever since their new their latest leadership change, um, and um, I would uh, I would I would seriously hope that they make communication a priority for for next year. Now I say this, but I'm not exactly jumping in to help them out with this. So, um, I, and they are volunteer run, so that's a little so it's a little hypocritical of me. So uh, if you're out there listening, and uh, you know may, maybe you can help out um, uh, if if you're inspired to do so. Okay, so uh, now uh, I wrote an article about this about. Uh, Specifically, what happened with uh, OS Grid called um, something about raid, making fun of the raid that it's both a uh, insect spray and um, the drive that went down. Uh, and and raid is um, a kind of um, uh, a kind of storage mechanism. Where you drives and what it is, you can have it set up so the second drive is a perfect copy of the first one. So if you're looking to retrieve a file and the first drive is busy, you can retrieve it from the second drive. So it speeds up access and also as a side benefit, you get a copy of all your files built in. Um, the but but there's another way to do RAID which is. You, you divide every file in half and you save half the file over here and half the file over there. So now if you want to retrieve a file, you can retrieve it for both drives at once, also speeding up your access. But you don't get a backup out of it, uh, automatic backup. Uh, so, th so the problem could be that they used that kind of RAID drive, the kind that speeds up access but doesn't provide you a backup, which is, you know, you, have, you need fewer drives for that, so it's convenient. Or the problem could have been in a controller that controls the drives, and there uh, it doesn't matter which version you have, because if your controller goes bad, you lose access to all your drives anyway. I so haven't. they haven't 
let people know. So there's speculation. So some people think that they had the wrong kind of raid without backups. Some people think, well, maybe the controller went bad. But either way, you shouldn't be spending a month waiting for this to come back because they should have had a backup of the entire system running. Yeah. I mean, so many grids have had outages and have backup problems, including our favorite yo-yo grid, Avi Worlds, <laughs> um, that every grid owner should be aware of the fact that you need good backups and you need backups all the time and you need local backups and you need remote backups. Um, you, 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 can't you this is not if you're running a grid for people that they're using for real things mm. you you're going to need that and even though always grid is a non-profit it's not commercial it's you know you know take it as as you want kind of grid there are educators on it there are open sim evangelists on it um there's entire communities like littlefield used to be on it uh, you don't want to let all these people down you you really don't. Um, you you know you run a fundraising campaign, raise money for backups if you need it, but but do something, you know really really do something. If they and get back online, I'd I be, think uh, I think a crowdfund or something should be in order for that kind of thing because as you say, it's yes, the showcase if, grid of the hypergrid in many ways. I know yeah. there's lots of others, but it's the the devs grid and. Um, Educators mm -hmm. and you know people like to show it all. Yeah, and I'd be more than happy to to sense. run a crowdfunder for OS Grid. Maybe we can do something like a nice challenge, <laughs> like a nice <laughs> bucket challenge. <laughs> nice bucket. Something, no, no, but something fun, something fun that we can do to 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 bring people's awareness to to the fact that by donating to open to OS Grid, we are helping promote open sim development in general and we're helping make because uh, it, it's the you know the cross crossroads of the hypergrid everybody eventually stops by os grid um, we, we, we really need os grid the developers need os grid the nonprofits need os grid because it's the best place to connect to because it's so big everything's there it's um, also used it's, 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 it's a it's usually the one grid, isn't it, that uh, deploys every new release of OpenSim the soonest. Exactly, exactly. Everyone's waiting for everybody else to try out oh, oh, the latest releases. Well, OS Grid is the one who does that. They're the ones who who try it out. So um, uh, we, we, that's why we need it. Uh, we we, sh we shouldn't just let this go away while everyone scatters and moves the regions other places so i'm going to stick it out i'm going to wait for always good to come back when it does i'm going to throw some money into the pot and i hope, hope everybody listening does the same uh, because uh it's a grid it is a non-profit uh they've had some pr misses in the past um they could use help with their pr they can use help with their outreach public relations they can use uh help with their communications and, and they can use money so they can put it towards backups because backups are just just a financial issue. You just need to pay for the extra drives mm -hmm. uh, and maybe for the development costs to hook them up. Okay. All right. So um, um, uh, let's see. What else? Um, what else is going on uh, back towards uh, the um, uh, September events? So I mentioned that Zeta Worlds is launched, so uh, you can get a uh, uh, connection there. And Pillars of Mist, uh, a new gr a new role-playing grid, which I, maybe I talked about last time, um, they, they decided to move over from having their own grid. They moved over as a it's – they're now just an area on um, Zeta Worlds. And I do want to encourage any community out there – that if you're just moving to open sim, you don't have to start right out with a full grid for yourselves. You can start out with a community on Kitely or a community on Zeta Worlds or a community on OS Grid once it comes back up. Um, just make sure that whatever place you pick to do your community lets you export your regions. So don't start by having a community on in worlds because you can't get it out. You can't get out of there again. So don't start on in worlds or Avenation. Start on craft. 
uh, Metropolis, uh, uh, Franco Grid, um, uh, OS Grid, or Zeta Worlds, any of the grids that let you save your regions. Um, and uh, so many of these grids will also let you save your inventories. So you can move those, so you can move a whole community over, avatars and regions as well. Um, and that's, it's definitely an easy way to start, especially if you start out with uh, hosting with Zeta Worlds, because you can just pay three bucks a region and you can move a whole lot of stuff over and uh, and just whenever you're ready to go to your own grid, um, you can have Zeta Worlds just upgrade you very easily. So definitely a good way to start. Uh, and we, we missed this because it was yesterday, but Queer Citizen Grid, another example of a community that, that was considering to have its own grid, but decided to just to be a region on Kitely, they had a, their launch party yesterday, uh, and their, their goal of their organization is to provide a safe virtual space for the lesbian, gay, bisexuals, transgender, queer, and A community. I, I don't know what A stands for. Um, sorry. And. and. LG. <laughs> Maybe asexual? <laughs> oh, it could be. I, I, I can think of it. And, you know, and dot, dot, dot. In other words, and <laughs> whatever, dot, dot, dot. Okay. whatever they can think of. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. yeah. So sorry. anyway, so that. they have a community. Uh, it's a safe place. They had a masquerade Android? hall uh, yesterday. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, so you, could, you can visit those areas. Uh, just uh, go to grid.kindly.com, queer citizens and events, and they have... Uh, uh, quite, quite a bit of area there. Um, you can do a search on the Google, on the Kitely. Um, go to Kitely.com. They have a search. You can search for regions. You can search for queer. Um, and, and Kitely had other stuff uh, hanging on, um, going on, on over there as well. Um, they had a uh, wear your goggles to the gold rush cozy mystery story that that began September 1st and will last for two months on Oaks Valley region in Kitely. And, uh, and I have a link to that and to the website. Um, uh, the photography competition for Resmella is over. Um, sorry. Um, that, I believe that ended uh, last week. Uh, and they were, they're giving away two, up to 250 bucks um, for winners who took photos and machinima in the Resmella system which is uh, something that you can use to create uh, educational simulations on Kitely and virtual training scenarios. So there's some really interesting uh, pictures and, and machinima there. So, so the contest was to promote uh, the Resmela um, tool sets, which I haven't written about before, and they look really interesting. So that so sounds like something that if you were an educator or a trainer, you might want to... Um, take a look at that and see um, and see what you can do with it. Um, that sounds um, um, that sounds uh, that sounds pretty cool. And let's see um, what else? Let me I, I, and the reason I keep saying um, um what else because I'm switching tabs and I'm running too many things on my computer. Yeah, that once. sounds like a familiar task. Uh, I'm doing the same. <laughs> <laughs> Kitely Market released some statistics, and uh, now uh, I, I mentioned this every. But Kitely Market uh, lists products, and it also lists variations of products, and it also lists exportable variations of products. And uh, so they have almost six thousand variations of more than three thousand products. And about 2,500 of those variations are exportable. And the rise, the growth in exportables has been three times higher than the growth in products, which um, I think is a very positive sign that merchants maybe are starting to embrace the hypergrid a little bit more. So I like seeing that. Um, and uh, uh, if you are a uh, merchant, uh, definitely, uh, Kitely is your place to get access to over a hundred different open sim grids if you want, or you can just keep your products to be sold only in Kitely. It's your choice. Um, and uh, uh, the adult metaverse community has uh, uh, changed moderators. Um, 
Avalonia Estate Grid, which is an adult femdom grid, uh, is no longer a public grid, but a private grid, um, for personal use only for the founders, friends, and family. And so he's, and so he's also, because he, he didn't have the time to devote to running it as a public grid. And so he also stepped down as moderator of the adult metaverse community. And Tala, Adam, and Nara Malone took over. And Nara Malone, I don't know if you know this, um, she is the founder of the Nara's Nook Grid, which is for writers. And one of the things that they do is erotic fiction, among as well as interactive stories and a lot of other things. And they've had they've had events, joint events together with um, with the Avalonia Estates, which uh, I've talked about here before. I think it's really interesting. You have hypergrid enabled grids coming together. For, for these kinds of things. And um, tell, Adam, of course, is the owner of the OpenSim virtual community on Google+, Plus, which has over 800 members. This is the community to go to if you want to know about anything at all in OpenSim. It's OpenSim virtual. I love that place. I recommend if you're not a member, if you care about OpenSim, go there right now and sign up. Uh, really fantastic resource. And one of the first things they did after taking over is they pointed uh, me to a couple of new adult destinations on Kitely. There is now Gore, a 16 um, region area dedicated to Gore role play, which is a adult fan role play where the women are slaves. And I don't know how I feel about that, so I'll just go on. Um, and. Um, uh, the Art and Space Expo ended uh, today on Tangle Grid. You might be able to get there if you teleport over right now. Today's the last day. Um, they, will, they will have another expo at the end of this month, though. So they seem to be, you know, just... They, and in fact, they just emailed me their 215 calendar for expos. So, the, so now, now this is how you experiment with business models. That's something, these expos are useful to the community. They definitely increase the grid's vis visibility. They've got major announcements to make uh, uh, every month that are useful, not just to their own members, but to the entire OpenSim community. And it helps bring in merchants and visitors, and uh, it really helps establish the grid uh, for, for that particular thing and helps get name recognition. So I love that. Um, so, uh, and I hope to have a write-up of how this expo uh, turned out later on this week. Right. Uh, Open Sim Conference is coming up. Uh, they're getting ready to put out their official um, calendar of events. There's schedule and run regular in Pacific. If you are around at noon, and I say this every week. And I'm going to say, keep saying it, stop by this load test. It's really important. Um, it's important to have real people there, not just bots and alts like like they're doing that when, when people don't show up. It helps make OpenSim more robust, more scalable, more resilient. Um, definitely, um, definitely stop by and help uh, help this. It benefits everybody. So uh, interrupt a second. Um, and I've got sounds like kitchen. all the grid. Somebody in a kitchen near. Yeah, that uh, wasn't wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he was something somewhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't me. It wasn't you. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to post the link to that in Skype so that you have the the link to that story and you can do with it right. what you want. Um, but speaking of the Open Sim Community Conference that's coming up, they had a big announcement. Philip Rosedale has agreed to be a keynote speaker. Ah, yes. uh, so I am, was very excited by this. Um, he obviously, for those of you who have been living under a rock, uh, he is the creator of, one of, uh, co-creator of Second Life, uh, one of the most visible people uh, behind it. And um, he is now building High Fidelity, and, uh, and, and which will be an op open source <laughs> platform. <laughs> <laughs> that's based on <laughs> bless you. That's based Sorry on mesh that. yeah. and voxels. Yeah. So very yeah, that interesting. Was, that was very good news um, indeed. Yeah, a couple of hours, <laughs> Yeah. Now, um, 
couple of weeks ago when I was here, I talked about how I exported my shape from Second Life to OpenSim using a method that apparently everyone else knew except me. Um, and I believe maybe Tara or Pet Love asked me about how I did my face. So I did a tutorial on how I did that using GIMP. Um, and I posted it online. And I used uh, Hillary Clinton as an example yes, to do the tutorial. That. Saw that. <laughs> that and I of, used... That got a lot of traction. <laughs> I saw masses of retweets of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, uh, but uh, apparently I made a mistake because I posted the avatar to Kitely to Kitely Market. Uh, if anybody didn't feel like getting the files for free from Hypercrude Business, they could just go buy a complete avatar from Kitely Market. And it turns out I mislabeled it. It was not safe for children. It was not general. It was a mature uh, outfit uh -huh. because and I used the default Linda Kelly skin. And uh, it didn't occur to me that this would be a problem because, of course, everybody is naked underneath their clothes, including children. But uh, and the pictures were, were not, the, the actual pictures of the skin bottoms were never posted. I just talked about what to do to get them to be the same skin tone as the face. Yeah. So I learned how to how to bake underwear onto skins, and which I I never done. Before. I mean, I've. <coughs> I don't do anything. I don't do anything. So so I baked underwear and and because the default underwear that Kitely provides is like you know it's it's like granny underwear. It's like yeah. tank top and giant grandma panties, which is okay for Hillary Clinton. So I created the Sorry. Hillary Clinton avatar with the granny panties. But I decided to create a work safe avatar for me because say for example all my clothes fell off while sitting here. I I don't want everybody to see me naked. So but I didn't want to wear granny panties. So I edited down the underwear so it's <laughs> so it's still it, it's, it still has provides coverage but it's now boy shorts and it's a strapless bra. So <laughs> And uh, and I made those publicly available in case anybody needs to bake underwear onto their avatar. Um, and uh, if you if you do need to be naked f for some legitimate reason, you can always you know switch back to your adult skin. I've been asked. To um, you know, I find it, I I find it one of the most fast. Yes. Uh, fast, fascinating things in in the world of, of avatars. And that is uh, how how it, it, the, the 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 presence or absence of attire is something all of us react to. In other words, <laughs> being having a naked avatar, we feel overexposed. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I I frequently uh, feel underexposed actually, but that's another matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been asked you know, by uh, La Pisian actually in chat if there's a link for that, and um, I presume just type of good business for your article and the kind of market for um, the uh, case. Well, <laughs> I I am going to copy that link. Right, we're not pasted, I'm, We haven't got a system if, for pasting into the channel. Uh, yes, we do. So, oh, okay. If, if it goes if it goes into Skype, I can get it into the channel. Okay, well, uh, just, Maria's put two uh, links. But I certainly couldn't do that while I was, well, I was doing my dog and pony show, but then yeah, that's yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah, uh, Fair enough. There, um, there's two links uh, in our that channel, so if we can get them across. So, yep. Yeah. Yes, I can. So I just I can, did that. Yes. So I so saw I posted how to create a WorkSafe avatar and how to put your own face on your avatar. Right. Um, because uh, I did not know these things, and uh, so I figured I'd share this information. I could not find it. I mean, I was Googling around. I did not want to do this from scratch. I'd much rather link to somebody else's article, you know, or ask permission to run a reprint because it's much less work for me. Um, but but uh, I, I, when I was Googling around, I couldn't find anything on it. So I was like, okay, yeah, I guess I'll have to, like, learn how to do this and, and post it up. All right. So, um, uh, Anna, let's see. Portal Wars, what's next? What is next? Um, so I talk about Philip Rosedale. Um, 
uh, September events. Uh, okay, um, one of the things we finally fixed on Hyperica is people have been complaining about not being able to add their destinations to the website. And so what I spent this week doing, instead of covering stuff in OpenSim, is getting uh, a buying, installing, and configuring a plugin that allowed people to add submissions directly to Word WordPress instead of going through Google Spreadsheets. So people can now upload images, uh, set my custom fields, and everything else that oh, goes in as a draft. Yeah. We, we, we all get emailed that there's a new draft destination. We can glance through it, make sure it's not spam. Also, there's a spam checker, but, you know. Yeah. Um, you need to do it yourself. <laughs> you know, safe. Yeah. yeah, we have to do is make sure it's safe. Uh, that it that it it actually has everything it needs, and then we just click publish and it gets published to the site. So um, it's very easy, it's very straightforward. We took out all the stuff that's not really strictly speaking necessary in order to to post uh, a destination, um, and people have already been uh, this week before I even like publish publicize this. People have already added two new grids to Hyperica. So I'm very excited. It's it's it seems to really work, and I'm really happy I did it. So if you have a hypergrid destination, um, please go. Uh, it's you don't have to submit uh, the grid separately from the region. Just you know, j all you need is the, is the all you need is the hypergrid address, the name of the region, the name of the grid. You you want to get a nice snapshot of it, and you want to write a little two sentence description of what's in there. What stuff you can find. Right. Um, uh, one of our new contributing writers uh, wrote a nice little feature story about five ways virtual reality will change education, in which she right. interviewed uh, some of the leading experts uh, in the space about it. So um, uh, that's a, a, a nice little story that I hope will spark some discussions. Of course, we all know, we here, we all, we all know how virtual reality will change education. Um, and she had, uh, um, she, she used the Mission V example as, as one of, uh, of the cases. And I don't know if you guys remember this. I wrote about, about it uh, in depth uh, a few months ago. So these kids went to a historic site in uh, Ireland or Scotland somewhere. And uh, they visited it. They came back home. They went into OpenSIM. They built the, uh, Ireland. They recreated it in open sim. Then they put on an Oculus Rift headset, and they were able to walk around inside of this uh, recreation that they built themselves. So um, I thought uh, that this was uh, this was really really cool. Um, and they're getting ready to to really um, uh, to to go uh, much more. Uh, widespread with this right now um, in Ireland. Um, uh, so, so she talks about the, the the usual things we all come to know. Um, uh, it allows for social collaboration and integration. It allows for things that are not possible in real life. Um, uh, it helps increase motivation because it's a virtual game-like experience. Um, uh, it's it has a new approach to rewards, uh, which I think is interesting. That uh, because you can reward for you can reward people f for 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 doing virtual stuff, um, it, not just in in the fact that they can they see the results of their own labors right there in front of them, but uh, you can also have virtual currencies or virtual goods as rewards as well, and since these things have an, uh, you know, instant tactile kind of feedback and use in the virtual world, I think that's that's also kind of cool, um, and and that it inspires a, a creative approach to learning because you can build build things in this new medium while you learn. So I thought that was um, uh, a nice little article, and yeah. um, I'm, I want to thank uh, Kate Abrasimova. Uh, for 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 doing this, and it looks like she she'll become a regular contributor doing this. Um, so I wanted to to pass along my thanks here in this context. 
Uh, and uh, the last thing that we had was um, uh, was uh, the, there's a new little headset from Vortex VR, which I thought was interesting because uh, it's it's not just another generic um, you know drop your cell phone. It headset Game Face is involved in it, and, and Game Face is known for its um, um, it's uh, Oculus competitor, uh, where it's it's got a computer right in the headset, so uh, you don't even need a separate computer to plug it into. Everything is in there, um, which is is pretty unique. So um, they're partnering with these guys to get into, um, I guess, to get into the uh, the case, the cell phone case uh, space. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, earlier today, uh, the the main I, th I think the main use for the the cell phone cases is is for watching TV, watching movies. Yep. Uh, oh, and uh, um, I think that's it for me. So um, in about a week, I'll be doing the and the mid month stats report. So if you're a grid owner out there. Uh, please, please uh, uh, start uh, thinking about uh, announcements and other stuff you want to send to me. Um, the two new grids are radioactive grid and two open. Um, and both of those grids launched with really, really nice and unique freebie areas. Um, so uh, if you go to hyperica.com and you visit them, uh, most most new grids when they first launched, they just use the Linda Kelly uh, region for their welcome region. They don't really spend a lot of time on it. Uh, so these two grids, even though they're very small grids, um, they've got stuff on them that um, I don't really see a lot of places. Um, the two open grid is is particularly interesting. A lot of places to explore in there. And a the radioactive grid is a combination of a Linda Kelly freebie mall. And the iMesh uh, store from Evia, Evia Bond. Um, so that's, and I haven't, I know that this, this copies of it elsewhere, but this is the first time I've seen it and it looks really cool. It's all mesh furniture, oh, all, all free. Yeah. So. Great. Radioactive grid. I, I love the names some people come up with. For grids, you know, some of them are really just kind of neutral and take a bit of remembering, and then others really are really good. dramatic. <laughs> yeah, so like Virtual Paradise just changed their name to Virtual Life because, as I told, as I mentioned them earlier, there's already Virtual Paradise stuff out there on the web, mm. and so they changed to Virtual Life, and I already had a Virtual Life grid in my database, and. Um, it was now the the virtual life that I have my database. I, I pulled up their grid page, and they're actually called Virtual Live Brazil right now. So I updated it so we don't have two virtual lives, yeah. you know, next to each other, which would be really confusing. It's like but web pages, really, isn't do it? Not, you... Please <laughs> do not like the same way you don't want to put online into your website name. Uh, unless you're the first one to go online and you happen to be AOL. Uh, unless you're the first grid, uh, please do not put first, second, third, fourth, or fifth life, virtual, or anything like that in there because all the grids do this. And please do not put any version of the word avatar or AV in mm. your name. Don't use world nation or island or any it's like um it's like re registering a domain name on the web these days you know yes. it will already be taken <laughs> the chances are so you know and these are no, no, quite no, a lot of thought no, you know as to what you want to get across the problem isn't that it will be taken but the problem is that your users who are good you you want word of mouth to spread Mm. So you want your resident to tell you to tell their friends, oh, come visit me on virtual life. And then their friends will be like, was it virtual life, virtual world, virtual grid, mm. virtual live, Brazil, virtual. 
Yeah. You know, there's so virtual nation, virtual, you know. Well, even though and, I get confused with Abbey Worlds and Abbey Nation. It's just so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> rolls off the tongue, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. 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 And uh, so, so please, please, please be like Littlefield. You will not confuse Littlefield with anyone else. It's yeah. a very evocative name. It's just, you know, I, I love them in Cotigrid, uh because it's it's a unique it's a unique name that's very very clear. Uh, but um, anything with virtual paradise, oasis, you know, island, tropical, all the uh, it's, yeah, for sure. Be, 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 you know, take your last name. <clears throat> make that into into your your, your grid. Um, if you were like, or, or do the kind of naming you would if you were naming a company like Google. It's, it's mm. Amazon's. They really stand out. They're really memorable. They have nothing to do with what they're doing, but they're really evocative, and you remember those names. And if you remember those names, you can pass it along to friends who can then Google it, and it comes right up because nobody else has the same name. Yeah. But if I, I try to find virtual life, I've been <clears throat> looking for a long time. I remember many years ago, well, a few years ago anyway, there, there was a lot of controversy at the time. I forget even who was CEO, but um, <laughs> it was Second Life's trademark and the use of the initials SL, you know, SLTV had to become Treat TV yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And at the time, I decided to be really cheeky and I formed a character and a blog called SL. But I spelt it uh, like Gazelle, you know, um, E double S E double L E. And I suddenly thought, you know, the same would apply if I started a grid called SL <laughs> as a name. <laughs> yeah. you know, it'd be very unwise because people would keep referring to see you in SL. And, you know, even little things like that would be, um, you know, a, a source of great confusion, I'm sure. So unless I was doing it deliberately and I'm not yeah. that sort of person, really. <laughs> um, yeah, stay clear of those kind of things. Yeah, yeah you're shooting I, yourself in the foot. Exactly. You know? yeah. you're, you're hurting your own marketing. Um now, in the case of the SL grid that you're talking about, uh, you might get the, you, you're not going to get a lot of people looking for that grid directly, but you might get some people looking for Second Life who end up on your grid by mistake. Yeah. Oh, that, that, yes. It works, maybe, it works both ways, but it's, it's like the connotation, isn't it? Everybody says SL instead of Second Life, so they tend to think yeah. they know what you mean. You, you can also <laughs> try to like uh, buy up all the domains of Second Life misspelled. Like second lift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, this is like me, you know. Uh, it happened today when I was loading my links uh, uh, before the show, but it happens to me almost every week. For some reason, I end up going to titter.com, <laughs> which doesn't, <laughs> oddly, oddly, oddly enough, it doesn't exist, but it's a typo. I always oh make it. <laughs> you know, I type titter.com into is my browser. Is titter.com? Yeah, and I expect the pop-up menu to show me my, you know, common in use destinations. Oh, I, well, where, where is it? Where is it? And I realize, uh-oh, typo. <laughs> oh, my God. That should be a site for celebrity tits. Yeah, oh, 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 God. Don't, we don't want to go there. Celebrity everything's at the moment, There's isn't it? How much traffic <laughs> we'll get from people who mistype Twitter. <laughs> Okay, at least, at least look at you. <laughs> um, well, tittering is kind of laughing too, so it's quite amusing if you see what I mean. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, really, there's no titter.com. I'm oh, shocked. There, no, there I'm is. There is. I'm, I'm just checking. There is one. I don't know what, you, what you're typing, Mal, but I think there must be something else going in your typing besides leaving out the W. Yeah. Because there is a titter.com with a tagline, want to play? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, fair enough. It's, okay. full of, well, it's, full of, it's full of cartoon kind, kinds of characters. Oh, so, I have okay. no idea what it means. Interesting. Interesting. Well, it's probably a reference to tittering, having fun, um, rather than anything okay. else. But anyway. anyway. Yeah, well, that seems, okay. yes, oh, oh, it seems okay. to have something. Well, that's the 10 bucks yeah. I would have had to spend to uh, register it. 
Because if it was not registered, it was just you would have. Oh, yeah, you oh, can't oh, let oh, that well, go. I was going to jump on that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. I... <laughs> yeah, uh, Tom is very good on this. <laughs> In the background, she's been busy <laughs> hunting to see if the names are yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I just well, I just typed, I just typed it into the to the address bar, and and uh, a site comes up, and it is titter dot com, and you get there, regardless of whether you just put titter dot com or www dot titter dot com. Okay, well, um, but one word of advice, folks, is that um, titter dot com. Malbone's writer and titter.com Malbones do not <laughs> get you where you're meant to go <laughs> they probably won't get you anywhere you'll get a 404 or something but um, watch the typos watch the typos okay well I've got um, well we've, we've been talking and stuff I've got some more links from my other feed that I've brought up I'm, I've actually pasted um, the first one into our channel so that, um, maybe it can get to the channel I'm afraid I didn't do this with the other links um, this is making strides against breast cancer across second life and um, it's basically um, a post in our Pays blog this actual event uh, begins today um, or began today uh, uh, no no it hasn't quite begun oh, yes yes I think it may have begun today uh, but basically uh, a Relay for Life is now in its new season effectively um, so I guess this uh, qualifies as a sort of a kickoff event and um, it's uh, it's specifically specifically I should say focused on breast cancer but um, it's uh, connected with Relay for Life and T1 Radio are doing the pre-kickoff show and then they've got music and uh, it's going on um, let me see I, it might just be today I had a feeling it was going on for a while but um, there are various kickoff um, sort of smaller events for the kickoff of the new season <clears throat> uh, given the experimental nature of today's show <laughs> and on the technical side I, I didn't actually invite Safia on but um, uh, what I do know is that the uh, home and garden uh, expo is coming up very soon um which she's involved with um she did have a, a post out today uh, a print perfect um asking a, a call for designers and stuff if they want to do talks and exhibitions at the home and garden show and um we're sort of slated to be um uh, um filming some of those i was uh, talking to uh, tara lean in the week who did the uh, design the talks at uh, the second life birthday and um, she's lining some stuff up there and I think um, I think um, I'm going to be filming a series of uh, the Prim Perfect talks which are the, the Prim Perfect place um, completely separate from that um, at some point in the near future too but uh, certainly look out for that and if you are a designer or just interested um, you know check out Home and Garden Expo I, I forget how I think it's only about 10 days two weeks away i may be wrong i may be wrong on that but it is one of the uh, biggest um sort of expos in second life not quite the scale of the fantasy fair or relay for life's weekend but um, pretty big pretty big in its own right um so um i put in a link there for another page blog um for that one um virtual ability all right so i'm just gonna uh, uh, copy and paste the link for this one too um have a post up today uh, basically advertising um the international disability rights affirmation conference it hardly seems like a year since the last one but this will be taking place on october the third to the fourth and um again the the central venues will be in fact possibly all the venues will be in uh second yes yes it's all international but in second life basically um so if um oh i didn't get the link across did i so um i put in the link you can follow for that one um all right what else do we have here um another one from um in our play um this is um information hang on a sec um transcending borders this is the latest thing um the yeah, arts and machinima contest from uh, the university of western australia and um she has a little preview of some of the art there that um has been coming in and is in situ so to speak uh for the art exhibition um side of that one and related to that i have another one here somewhere oh there's the tab right again <laughs> oh good old in our page she's um uh, she's all over the place um again in our page blog 
link coming over. Um, uh, this is a press release that's actually gone about, about everywhere, but basically the University of Western Australia have announced the Freedom Project books being available. Um, apparently you can order a nice um, hardbound, glossy, real-life paper book, <laughs> um, which is based on the uh, Freedom Project, so it covers the Freedom Project that they had a while back, and um, you can find out more about that at um, that, that, um, that link. And there is another in our paper link uh, here somewhere. Oh, yes, this may... Um, oh, we have two. No, we have to. Uh, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's the same blog again, but a different post. Okay, um, this one um, is about a viewer called the Replex Viewer, um, R E P L E X. And uh, this is um, following the latest release of Singularity, which was last Thursday. Oh, I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, Singularity had an update on Thursday to version 1. Point, uh, well, I can't uh, wear my glasses, he says. <laughs> right, yeah, Singularity's new version is uh, 1.8.6. And uh, the Replex, um, which is a viewer led by Latif uh, uh, Khalifa, um, also had an update yesterday, or uh, Saturday, uh, to version 1.0.0.6229. And um, basically, they're very interlinked, uh, these viewers, which is why the uh, replays viewer is um, so quickly behind singularity, as it were. Um, uh, Inara says she actually uh, reviewed um, an alpha version um, of it uh, back in June. It's not a browser I've tried or have come across, but um, if it's anything like Singularity, I suspect it's a rather good one, so you can check that out there. And um, also in common with Singularity, I suspect it's one that is very suitable for Open Sim as well as Second Life. Um, on the Second Life front, um, no comments from Pet Love, of course, this week, but I have a link. Uh, the Friday Hunt report, basically, um, that is one post that comes up every week, which will tell you everything about grid-wide hunts and um, store hunts and things like that. And as we all know, hunting is a, a virtual world by Second Life. And if you're already in it, just to discover new places and fun things that you can get for cheap or special things that you get for free. Most hunts have their prizes for free. Um, Right, uh, two two more, and I'll go into a conversation on this. Um, the other the other interesting thing. Um, this is really a bit of a personal post uh, from Inara, actually. Um, back to hers again. Um, Machinima and me, and um, Inara Inara is um, very great at providing links. We often, um, you know, sort of uh, promote her um, features and stuff here, as I've just done seven times, I believe. <laughs> but um, uh, this post is actually about the fact she's got sort of a new kit, and um, everybody likes it when they've got new kit, and she's got a space navigator and various things. And um, she's um, going to be um, trying out uh, doing some machinima again. And on uh, We Can Review tomorrow... Um, we actually have one, uh, which is called, um, ooh, lordy, lordy, Il Foli Volo, which uh, translates as The Mad Flight, and it was filmed at The Lost Garden, uh, sorry, The Lost City, I think it's called, and uh, she's done a very good job on that, so um, I don't think she'll have any problem getting to grips with Machinima at all, and uh, I was rather snidely thinking behind the scenes here, well, wouldn't it be good if she wants to practice on this show? She, she doesn't do voice, but um, she's the sort of person that I'd really love to have on this show, uh, because we um, follow her so much. Anyway, uh, you can find out about that there, and the final link I've got, and um, this seems rather similar, although I know it's definitely not the same one as one I um, um, posted last week. Um, yes, yes, um, we have realized that. Um, and there's the last link coming across now. Um, there, this is a blog from Opole uh, called Standing Infinity, and she did post um, another one um, uh, last week. And uh, she references again her visit to um, Utherverse, or rather, um, uh, uh, oh, God, what was it called now? Ave, uh, Ave, uh, uh, 
Uh, virtual con, that was right. Um, did you ever virtual get to conference. this, Maria, by the way? Did you ever pop in there at all? No, I talked to the president. Um, mm -hmm. I was... Uh, uh, and I posted an article about what they're what they're going to having on there. Yeah. Uh, they they said they'll be streaming uh, and archiving all the sessions. Yeah. So hopefully I'll get a chance to watch some of these. I'm particularly interested in the Game Face one. Yeah. And um, they've got uh, several other hardware uh, designers were on there as well. Yeah. I actually did go in each day. I, I um, the first day I didn't film anything. Um, and in fact the panel on the future of uh, uh, VR. Was that actually excellent? It, um, you know, uh, it wasn't as hardware orientated as I thought. The second day, I did get to film a panel called um, uh, the. Um, I haven't published it anywhere. Um, I need permission first, but um, a panel called the Future of Virtual Worlds, as opposed to VR, and that actually was the one that was disappointing because all they could talk about was VR hardware. <laughs> they should have. <laughs> the, the, you know, the the panels should have been renamed, actually. You know, the second day should have been VR and the third day should have been Virtual Worlds. Mm -hmm. But this was, um, I mentioned at the top of the show, this was where um, the, a lot of consensus opinion was, again, about, you know, the breakthrough thing is going to be cinema and out-of-home experiences, um, you know, which yeah. are going to extend uh, the interest in uh, virtuality rather than just the Oculus Rifts in people's homes who play games and stuff. So um, the, the, the outside, I, I became more convinced than ever that they were on to um, you know, a, a, a good vision there when they were uh, emphasizing that the primary um, avenue for promoting this stuff is out of home experiences rather than in, in the home experiences. However, on the... Um, <clears throat> On the third day, um, Opalay, the, the blog I just posted, um, she actually uh, gave um, a talk in um, what was more of a lifestyle sort of thing. And um, um, she also did a, um, a Talk Light like Dim Sum program that I think we ran on this channel for a while. There were only about eight episodes, but it was lifestyle conversation that she did as a sort of video talk show in all oh, God noise again. Um, it's a clanking noise coming on through my speaker. I think right. it's, 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 yes, it's from me. I'm sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. From somewhere. Right. Um, and um, yeah, Talk Like This Sun was the show she did. So I didn't actually get to see her um, her talk, but I did arrive um, for um, another talk afterwards, which was on avatar uh, relationships and things like that. And um, it, um, that actually was one of the most excellent talks, and I did actually get to film that too. Um, I, I, I came in thinking it was because um, uh, she's actually authored a book called The Virgin Book of Virtual Relationships, I think it's called. And I thought she was going to talk about, you know, um, love affairs and, you know, that sort of stuff. But in fact, it was um, really good um, uh, thing about um, immersionists or mentalists and... Um, Oh, crumbs. I've forgotten the other terminology she's come up with, which was quite interesting. Um, you know, the different ways in people in which people use avatars and relate to other people. And she's d detected three sort of different patterns. You know, there's the, the role play, the, um, the, the, the casual, but um, not too role play, a sort of, and the augmentalists who, you know, go in and out to do their thing. And she's examining all this crossover and stuff. So, um, all in all, it's. Um, it it was also a very professionally um, organized um, event. Sadly, the platform itself was hopeless. Um, when I say I filmed, I mean, you basically got an audio podcast with my set cam, you know, whatever view I had. I couldn't, uh, there was no camera to operate. And um, also it had, it had this very peculiar thing um, where you would be in an exhibition hall and there'd be f a sort of eight other sub halls off it. And every time you went through a door, it, it did the equivalent of Second Life teleporting you to a new location. Even though you could see through the door, it required a teleport to get through the door. And it was a bloody mm -hmm. long teleport, as they say. So I wasn't very happy with the platform, but I thought the organization and some of the, um, some of the talks were great. So, um, yeah. Um, but that's all over now for another year, and um, we'll, we'll see what happens then. Okay, right. Well, um, that's, uh, that's I the have, remainder of I my have, things. Yeah. I have two more pieces of news. Some yeah. good news and some bad news. Right. Go with so the bad, first bad, of, 
bad first. <laughs> bad news is, um, you know how you mentioned Avi Worlds earlier today? Uh, oh yes, and as, as in Avi, whatever. And how they were going to stay up forever in their well, last announcement? Yeah, actually, there is no confusion. They're down. <laughs> There's no They're confusion. They're down again. <laughs> I was just going to. I was just going to. I was just going to say there is no conf real confusion between Avi Worlds and Avi Nation because Avi Worlds is now renamed the Yo Yo Grid and has been for some time. <laughs> <laughs> they are down again, and even though I've complained about this every single time, they have again taken down all their social media accounts. So their Facebook group is gone, their Twitter account is gone, and it looks like their Google Plus community is gone. So if when people are waiting to see where they're going to pop up again, there's no place to go to stay on top of the news. So I'm really hoping that, I mean, I, I shouldn't say this. I hope that they'll find themselves again. But really, if you're going to come back up, keep your social media stuff up. Tell people what happened. Give mm. them notice. Again, no notice and no no ongoing news, nothing. Yeah. So, um, very, very, very disappointed in you, Avi Worlds and Alex Pompaselli. Very. Maybe, 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 shame, maybe, shame maybe, maybe, maybe the spring will finally just get broken and they won't bounce up again. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I know. Well, I, I, I hate it. to say that. Sorry. I was just going to say that, that, that this sort of behavior. It seems appropriate if somebody's about oh sixteen or seventeen years old, maybe. But if this is a grown up picture, behaving yeah. this way, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And they got yeah. and they presumably they got a few customers who can't be happy either. So yeah. yeah. But what is the good yeah, news? Now right. the that's other <laughs> uh, the other one <laughs> the other one was good news and and a correction. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier today that uh, uh, Skytly is the is the marketplace you go to if you want to sell to to multiple grids to 100 plus hypergrid grids, mm. um, but uh, which is uh, true, but not really gives you the full picture um, because I, I in fact just earlier today put up a, a freebie ad for Total Avatar Shop. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not taking money for this ad. It's an ad that just runs on Hyperica. Anybody can get a free ad on Hyperica. If you want a free ad, just, just let me know. And Total Avatar Shop has lots and lots of items. And uh, Sunny Whitfield, who runs it, delivers to any grid mm. you want to deliver to. Um, this is a shop where you go online, uh, you pay with PayPal for your items, and she will deliver it to you wherever you want it to go. So uh, the, uh, the, the URL is totalavatarshop.com. And I will post it here into Skype. And, uh, uh, and, and I wanted to mention it because it's, it's kind of unfair to, to say that Kitely is the only place. Mm. That um, there is another place to go if you want to, to deliver elsewhere. And uh, I believe she will also sell things that are made by other people uh, if you want to connect with her and um, if you want to uh, have her sell your stuff. Um, I believe that she does, uh, she does do this. So um, you need to give her your avatar name in the virtual world where you want the stuff delivered. Mm. And she will show up. She will personally deliver the stuff for you. In fact, that's how uh, when she delivered to Hyperica, um, she just came and she gave me stuff. So ah, it's like a different uh, way of doing it. Nice grassroots way of doing things. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, she, she hmm. doesn't have so many customers that she has to automate it like Second Life does. Hmm. Uh, so she can actually serve customers individually. Um, and the other thing she can do is, if you have um, a private grid, uh, you can create an, uh, you can just create an account for her to visit on, and she will come and she will deliver stuff into your private grid. You know, this reminds. So, uh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this, uh, uh, this uh, my, uh, you know, uh, well, we promote the uh, kindly uh, marketplace because it's great. They pioneered something that was much needed and, um, you know, it's a bit like Second Life's marketplace. But um, obviously, uh, you know, the more the merrier, um, you know, just like um, multiple grids themselves, you know, multiple marketplaces. Why not if they can deliver to all? But I, I suddenly thought that, you know, there might be a, you know, here with the hypergrid and everything else, there might be a role. Um, you know, for, um, you know, if, if, if a marketplace is a shop or you've got an in-world shop, you know, what about the old, um, the old profession of the traveling salesman? Imagine somebody who went to a different grid every week and pitched up with their inventory and uh, kind of sold his stuff and then was gone. Um, you know, um, it's like that personal thing she comes in and delivers to you. I mean, I'm, a lot of people must appreciate that. You know, if I'm hanging around in the grid and I try and buy something and in pops an avatar and actually gives it to me in person and watches me res it to check it's okay. I mean, that's good service. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat more personal and, um, you know, sort of um, favorable <laughs> in some ways than um, the idea of just... Um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> going to the marketplace That's, and getting it, something. That the human, the human, the RL uh, self uh, involvement uh, in that would uh, make it, I think, quite cost prohibitive to do it seriously. I, I any length so, of time. I think so too. But um, it's um, when you look at the web, for example. Um, you know, um, it's no longer a level playing field in real sense. But think of the number of local craft shops, be it in the village in the middle of England or somewhere in the backwaters of the Midwest or somewhere in Australia. You know, there, suddenly their craft shop, which was unique to their community and the tourists that came, was, very, was possible to put that shop on the, uh, on the web. <coughs> and... They possibly don't ever grow into anything gigantic. They've just extended their reach. Now, if you are making crafts of some sort, virtually, and that is all you do, you have a speciality, then I don't know that the idea of, um, you know, um, being a traveling thing, you know, um, would that be prohibitive? You'd make it an event, you know, sort of uh, this week, right. you know, I come, I'm coming to Tangle Grid. And you'll be able to see all the latest range of my handcrafted, um, you know, um, right. so, so, uh, virtual yep. ceramics or something. And I think for somebody that on that, that level, I think it would be manageable, actually. There's, th there's, there's fashion desires to do that in real life. I remember writing about uh, trunk shows where a fashion designer will, will have agreements with local stores that are usually high-end clothing boutiques. And they would show up with a selection of their high-end content, and the store, the boutique store, will invite their best customers, who are like the most fast-forward customers, private showing of this mm -hmm. designer's clothing, and it was a way to get unique high-end content that isn't the same as everybody else's, mm -hmm. that is special for for a very select group of people, mm -hmm. and you get to meet the designer. And it's, it could be a very, very special thing. And, mm. um, and I think that's really cool. But even if you don't do it that way, like, like with, um, with Sunny Whitfield, um, I mean, she has a kind of a small to medium-sized shop online. And uh, I'm sure for some, most of the bigger grids, it's an automatic delivery that she's got set up one way or the other. And mm. the smaller customers for the private grids that she has to deliver to, it's probably great for um, for uh, brand name recognition, mm. and then if one of those grids needs custom content, they know her. They know mm. the lengths she will go to to serve them. So, and the people with with small private custom grids are often schools mm. and cor companies. Yeah. Because if you're an individual with a small grid, you're gonna hyper grid enable it, and you're gonna teleport out to OS Grid to get your stuff. Mm. Um, if uh, whereas if you have a small private grid, I think it just yeah. seems like a good idea in the sense that you know it would um, 
you know, a word of mouth too. You know, if you bought something for, yep. off a person individually and whatever, and it's not easily available anywhere else, and it's you know, exactly. and a luxury item, you know, word goes around. Say, oh, you should contact this person I know. She'll come and bring it to you and kick you out and everything else like that. Yep. So, and uh, yeah, yep. the, oh, well, hopefully not like the old Tupperware parties. <laughs> I mean, yep. imagine remember how they worked. You know. Anyway, I hate to say it, but we're still actually still have, sorry. Out of time. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, Tommy, you do not up. need. You don't. I was just still about. Alive and well. I was just about to announce that. So I don't need to be told every five minutes. <laughs> we are uh, just about out of time here. We're coming up to the two hours. I know we go over slightly sometimes, but. Um, I think it's time to wrap up. We've lasted two hours running this experimentally, so um, hopefully all is good. Um, uh, closing thoughts. Um, uh, yeah, anything else, Maria, very quickly before we round up? Um, nope. Probably, nope. Probably not. Just a <laughs> yeah. reminder that if you have announcements, email me because I'm doing the mid-grid report on the 15th. Right, and for all the all the latest things, of course, um, uh, on the metaverse, go to hypergreedbusiness dot com, where you'll find multiple posts Yay. daily from um, both um, Maria and um, her um, contributors as well. Uh, Tara, anything else from you? Uh, no, other than we, other, other than I survived on this end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what the results are <laughs> indeed we will okay well I hope uh, thanks everybody for watching um, as ever um, I hope the uh, broadcast um, has um, been reasonable <laughs> uh, we have an offline backup too uh, unfortunately my backup does not include lips moving except for mine of course um, because my, my lips of course have to move don't they <laughs> but nobody else's will um, so you know um, one way or another we've got two copies and we'll certainly be able to um, post uh, very shortly um, one or other of the copies and or even maybe make an edit or something you never know so uh, we will be back of course uh, one way or another um, whoever's involved uh, same time uh, same place next week if you want to watch this show in replay um, <laughs> maybe we'll send both copies to Slartist I don't know um, do go to uh, Slartist.com that's S-L-A-R-T-I-S-T dot com and you can both uh, watch this show in replay shortly but you'll also be able to watch all our past shows um, in replay there and uh, in high definition and on your Android device or your iPad or whatever um, other piece of kit you've got, really. It will show everywhere. Um, so um, I'd like to thank, as usual, um, uh, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Mal, for having me. It's always a pleasure. And uh, thank you, Tara. You're welcome. Uh, both of you this week, if you see what I mean. <laughs> 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 and um yeah, oh yes yes of course do um check out my feed on twitter twitter.com slash malburns or indeed for second life stuff you can check out twitter.com slash malburns underscore writer um for uh, links as they come up and come in so to speak so uh with that i'll um sign off for now and uh we will uh see you again next week And we're clear. Yay! Whoops. Well, it's certainly working perfectly well at the end there <laughs> when I put the volume on. <laughs> Oops, come on. There, there we go. That's better. Whoa! Oh, and I better shut down this one too, haven't I? I can, I can soon trim this one.